A few days ago, season one of Fallout dropped on Amazon Prime. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comments section. Share your thoughts on season one of Fallout and give a point of reference. Have you played the games? Are you new to the franchise? All of that fun stuff. As for me, I have not played any of the Fallout games. I'm aware of their existence. I've seen some of the imagery, but I couldn't even have given you a basic synopsis of the plot of the Fallout franchise. I didn't even watch a trailer for the show whenever they dropped. My interest in it was basically simply because Jonathan Nolan was attached to it in some regard, but I wasn't tracking it at all all and i got invited to a press screening at the bob bullock imax theater in town it's the one true imax theater in austin texas and they've only done like two press screenings there in my entire time as a film critic and so i wanted to go simply because i like going to the bob bullock i texted my buddy andy he has played the fallout game so he was excited to go check it out but I went in totally cold with virtually no knowledge of what I was about to go see. And then over the rest of the week, once it dropped on Amazon Prime, I finished the season. With that said, let's get started with the good. And as you can probably piece together from what I just said about binging through the show in a couple of days, as soon as it dropped on Amazon Prime, I was hooked as soon as I saw the opening scene for the show and thoroughly enjoyed the ride of the full season. But just right out of the gate, you feel like you're immersed in this new and different world with a distinct aesthetic, a unique way of capturing this world filled with mysteries, curiosities, things that you want to learn more about, and you just kind of get this heartbreaking introduction to this world and then it cuts to something totally different tonally different that's also fascinating with its own unique distinct aesthetic with its own mysteries that you want to explore and soon that itself has a gigantic tonal shift with more mysteries more questions and that's what this show did so well for me, is put me in environments that made me curious, that I found fascinating, and then raised questions, mysteries that I actually wanted answers to, and that I wanted to play out the journey of discovering the truth behind everything that was going on. But as I mentioned in all of this, everything about this show has a very distinct vibe and aesthetic where it's set in this alternate timeline where we got, got like stuck in the 1950s but it's also futuristic and it, it just makes it interesting it, it's fun you're playing out a sci-fi version of retro tech so it just looks cool and then they play that out again through this time jump into the aftermath of the apocalypse so there's just Everything about it has a weird, interesting vibe. And then so much of it plays out like a Western. So we're in the 50s, we're in the future, we're post-apocalyptic, we're sci-fi, we're Western, plus many more mech suits. And it manages to merge them together in a way that feels pretty seamless, but also makes you curious about everything that you're seeing. Other thing you have to you know, talk about here, it has this very dark sense of humor to all of it where you're in this bl very bleak future that's very peculiar and weird at times. So it can have weird humor. It can have gee whiz humor in particular with the vault people going out and exploring this world of violence where you just have this sharp contrast by the utter innocence and naivety of, of Lucy with the ultra violence that's all around her and her reactions to it. A lot of that reminded me of Demolition Man, which is very much a compliment because that's a great 30 year old movie. And that way that you can have that innocent person in this very corrupt world, it's fun to see all of that. Other times you know, dark, dark commentary on and satire of corporations 
which gave it a Paul Verhoeven vibe to it with a lot of what was explored in RoboCop about these corporations that just don't care about anyone other than the profits and especially the vault tech aspect of it. it feels very Omnicore from RoboCop. But then even exploring the world with the ultraviolence to it, the militarism has some starship troopers to it. And so pulling from some some sci-fi action films of decades past that I absolutely adore, all while kind of giving it its own vibe, its own flavor of satire, own flavor of comedy as you kind of go through it. Another thing that makes it work is that you've got several really solid central characters, I would say in particular Lucy and the ghoul as they're on kind of two polar opposite ends of things. You have Lucy, our vault dweller, who almost quite literally has lived her life in a bubble or a vault, which is designed with these very idyllic principles. She's book smart. She's incredibly naive, very, very naive, and dropped with her very idealistic worldview and her savior complex that she's been raised with into this utterly corrupt world where she has to learn to adapt and figure out how does she not compromise who or who she is in a world where it kind of demands that you make compromises if you want to survive. So you have her that's and and she's a character that is willing to, to act she has skills. She's been training in training sessions for action her whole life, but has no clue how to apply them into the in any sort of real context. And then you have the ghoul, the 250 year old person that has been around since before all of this, who has utterly lost his humanity, his compassion. And there's that mystery of how did we go from the, the caring father and the opening scene to what we're seeing here. This guy that just doesn't care, that is captivating. He'll he'll do good things if it serves him. How did he how did he get there? And he he sees this vault person that has no clue what she's in and kind of wants to to pull her into all wants to tempt her away. And there's something fascinating about all of that. There's something interesting in that dynamic of the two of them and how much will she move towards him and how much can she pull him back towards maybe a little flavor of his humanity. Other thing that works really well here is the whole whole thing is built around mysteries with actual intrigue. From the very beginning, when we do the hard cut from the bombs dropping and our Hollywood man riding off on the horse with his daughter to people in a vault 209 years later, immediately you have questions of how did we get from A to, to B, or I guess from A to Z as, as it kind of is. And then you're in this world with very specific rules. Everything kind of goes down at the end of that first episode that kind of kicks the plot into action. And you're wondering who her dad is, who this woman is. What's the deal with these vaults? What happened to the vault next door? There's so many questions that you actually want answered. And it does a good job of like slowly inching you towards the answers. And maybe we'll put one on the back burner for a little bit and we'll pick another one up in the next episode. And then we'll kind of jump back in time, show our Hollywood man and start exploring them from this different angle. So that by the time you get to the end of the season and it starts giving you answers, you really feel like you've been on a journey and earned the answers. It feels like payoff because we worked the whole season to get to these answers, unfolding things on multiple timelines and multiple contexts to find out and discover the truth about what has kind of been going on. Who are some of these people? How do these vault works? Why are they the way that they are? And even what is the ghoul up to in all of this? What is he trying to, to figure out in, in everything? Another nice thing about all of it is it's just a world that you like to explore where because everything is so wild and crazy and, and unpredictable, you want to find out what's around the corner. 
You want to find out what the other vaults are like and what they're up to. You you want to learn more about everything. All of it just feels like a place where you want to go everywhere and learn more about things that are happening. And when I get into the negatives, I'll, I'll kind of touch on that a little bit, but it lends itself to side quests because you want to see things. You want to learn more about this world. But like overall, when you, you kind of take all of the pieces of it, you have a lively set of characters in a world that you want to explore. And I don't, like I, having not played the games, I, I don't know exactly the nature of them, but I, I imagine this is kind of the whole concept of that you're exploring this wild, crazy world, meeting all these wild, crazy characters, and it and it captures that really nicely. There's a slow revelation of reveals. There's plenty of dark humor. There's commentary. It has a distinct vibe to it. So consistently entertaining on multiple different levels and all sorts of journeys that you want to go on. And by the time it got to the end of the season, I, I felt like I got to both a point where I was like, oh, cool. I got answers to what I needed answers to, but also when, oh man, I can't wait until season two. I can't wait for more of this. So I thoroughly enjoyed what this show had to offer, but there were a couple things about it that did bug me. So let's move on to the bad. And the first thing that comes to mind here is that the middle of the season goes into side quest mode. So the first episode establishes the characters and Lucy's primary objective to find her father. Episode two brings in our two other two lead characters on this quest to track down our item for the season. And it gives Lucy the specific objective of what she needs to do to achieve our, her primary goal in regards to her father. Third episode kind of expands upon that, trades hands, and then essentially for the next four episodes, we're just on side quests. And when that happens, we kind of kind of have this like the plot line. We're exploring the vaults and the mysteries there. And so that really moves forward. We expand on the lore. We give answers to questions about backstories and important things happen that are building out the world, the characters, the mystery and everything like that. But when it comes to our main plot line, trying to get from point A to point B, it's a lot of just kind of like wandering around on side quests to do things. And then for the last episode, we finally get back to our main plot point. And the villain introduced in the first episode finally comes back into the main storyline again. And on the one hand, I enjoyed the side quests and I enjoyed the lore and the backstory. It wasn't like I watched an episode and I went, well, that was pointless. I didn't like that. It wasn't that but because the first three episodes progressed the story so much and then it felt like, OK, but <laughs> what about the thing that we're supposed to get over there? Um, it, it just felt like we took the main plot, put it on the back burner for four episodes and just explored vaults, explored all this other stuff and had many adventures, went to a hospital and then loop back around at the end to finally give answers to our, our, our main storyline. I think the season as a whole probably would have been more effective if they didn't delay moving the main plot forward so much and maybe move some of that stuff in the final episode into the last two episodes or so. Maybe condense some of the stuff in the other vaults and some of the side quests a little bit. Other kind of issue I had with the season, I thought that Maximus was significantly less interesting than our other two lead characters where he's just written to be kind of like this this guy that's his own version of naive. He's just lived in his own military bubble uh, where he just kind of has like this like shocked look on his face all the time. And then he smiles sometimes, but it just doesn't feel like there is many layers to him and complexity. He's he's written to be just like a very foolish character that doesn't think through any of his actions. He's selfish in many regards, but not in a compelling, interesting way. He's just not interesting yet. And they keep cutting back to the same shot of him as a child without like ex 
expanding it. It's all the same shot. And they give a couple reveals of his childhood and the context of that that image. But it they they just never give him the depth or really the, the growth that I feel we got from our other lead characters. And then finally, uh, and this isn't necessarily about the quality of the show itself, but I think that releasing this all in one batch was a mistake. Where when you have a show that is built so much around mystery, intrigue, and exploring, those are the shows that work well to release over an extended period of time. It becomes the water cooler show. Like, oh, did you did you see Fallout? Discussing it the day afterwards, more people kind of join in on the fun. You build excitement for the show and you build an audience. And I think when you drop them all at once, you get that that one splash, but you're not able to build momentum. I think the hybrid model of releasing episodes in batches, I think that's the way that I like streaming shows to watch, in particular ones like this, where there's so much to process, think about, theorize about. But when you put it all together, I really enjoyed the show. I can't wait until we get season two. It'll probably be two more years until we get it. So thrilled that Walton Goggins, who's been a great character actor for a long time, is getting to be front and center on a big sci-fi project that I'm sure a ton of people are gonna watch. It's gonna you know, raise how, how, how no, he's gonna move from character actor. I mean, with this, he moves from character actor, side actor to lead actor in a much more mainstream sort of way. Also love that Jonathan Nolan continues to establish himself as a solid force in the world of television. I thoroughly enjoyed Person of Interest, a show that he did 10 years back, and then really enjoyed seasons one and four of Westworld, not so much two and three, but it started off fantastic. And once again, here, we get another great world to explore with interesting ideas, but wildly different from anything that his brother's done. That the Nolan brothers are incredibly talented, very smart, thoughtful people, but it's not like they're in the same lane competing with each other. And so Jonathan continues to cut his own path. I love that. So do you like sci-fi? I assume if you like the Fallout games, if you like Paul Verhoeven, if you like Demolition Man, check out this show. It's very cool. Great aesthetic. Um, I was hooked from the very beginning, and as soon as you see that opening sequence, you'll probably be hooked too. You can check out my favorite video game movies right over there. We're kind of in a time period right now where we're getting a lot of great adaptations of video games, both in movies as well in TV. Cool time to be alive. Thank you so much for watching. Keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.